Hi class, today we're going to cover chapter 6, problem 4b. Okay, if you'll hold on just a minute. Okay, there we go. You should be able to see chapter six, problem 4B now. And what I've done is I've copied this from Cengage into my Excel spreadsheet because there's some computations that you have to know how to do with these journal entries. And I thought it'd just be easier to show you how to do the computations through Excel. Uh, the only thing you're gonna have to do on these transactions is to record the journal entries. Uh, in this problem, we're going to be doing sales related and purchase related transactions for both the seller and the buyer. And we're gonna be using the perpetual inventory system. And so all the transactions were completed for April and the transactions happened between the Swan Company and the Bird Company. So on this problem, we're gonna do something just a little bit different. We're gonna do all the transactions as if we are the Bird Company first and then we're going to turn around and do the same transactions as if we were the Swan Company. So it's important for you to realize that we're going to be doing the recording of the April transactions for the Bird Company, who is going to be the buyer in this uh, situation. And all we're going to be doing is putting them into journal entries. And so I've set up a journal for you. And we're going to talk about each one of these transactions. On April the 2nd, the Swan Company sold the merchandise on account to the Bird Company. Remember, we are going to be the Bird Company. We're going to be recording the transactions as if we are the Bird Company first. And they have uh, bought some merchandise from the Swan Company. And the gross amount of the merchandise was $32,000. There were terms associated with the shipping, which says that it's FOB shipping point, which means that the buyer, who is the Bird Company, is going to be paying the shipping charges. They also, the buyer has been offered a 2% discount if they pay within 10 days. If they don't pay within 10 days, the full amount is due in 30 days. Now you'll remember from a previous recording, we said that all of our buyers are gonna take advantage of the discounts that are offered to them. That's just a rule that we use in this particular chapter. All buyers are going to take advantage of the discounts. All the sellers who offer uh, sales discounts are going to be recording these as, uh, as if the customer is going to take advantage of those discounts. So in other words, what I'm trying to say to you is that since we're the buyer, we've been offered a 2% discount and we are gonna take advantage of that. So we need to record this transaction at the net purchase price, which means we're gonna take the 32,000 and multiply it by 98%. But then they threw in some extra things in this particular problem. It says the Swan Company paid the freight of 330. Well, the Swan Company was a seller and the terms were FOB shipping point. So the purchaser is supposed to pay. So what the Swan Company is doing is as a courtesy to the Bird Company, they have prepaid the shipping for them 
but then they added it back to their invoice. So this $330 has to be paid by um, the buyer, but it's gonna be added to the invoice. And so it's just gonna add to the uh, buyer's accounts payable that they owe to the Swan Company. And then it tells you the cost of merchandise sold was 19,200. Um, in this particular problem, in the first part of this, we're journalizing the transactions from the buyer's point of view only. So this information here about the cost of merchandise sold doesn't apply to the bird company. It will apply to the swine company when we get ready to do the swine company's transactions. All right, with all that being said, when we are the bird company and we're buying the merchandise, our merchandise inventory account is increasing. To increase the asset merchandise inventory, we have to debit this account. Because we're assuming that all of our transactions are on credit, unless they tell us that we paid cash or bought, bought with the the merchandise with cash, which they didn't do here. Um, we're going to assume that all these transactions are on credit. So when we buy merchandise on credit, we are increasing our liability account called accounts payable. We owe the Swan Company now for this transaction. Right below this journal entry, I put how we record the computation so you'll know how we're getting the amount that I've debited here. So I took the 32,000 gross amount and I multiplied it by 98% because we've been offered a 2% discount. That means we're only gonna pay for 98% of this total purchase. Um, if we multiply 32,000 times 98%, it will give us 31,360. But because we had terms of FOB shipping point, which tells us that we as the buyer are supposed to pay the shipping and what the Swan Company did for us is a courtesy to us they went ahead and paid it for us, but then they added it back to our invoice. So those $330 in shipping has to be added back to the total amount that we owe to the Swan Company. So the total amount that we owe to the Swan Company is 31690 And that's the total cost of the merchandise inventory that we have bought. Uh, from the Swan Company from this particular transaction. On the next transaction, the Swan Company sold the merchandise on account to the Bird Company again. We're still the Bird Company. We're buying the merchandise. The gross amount of the merchandise was 49500 The terms this time were FOB destination. So the shipping terms FOB destination means the seller has to pay the shipping. They don't have anything to do with the buyer's transaction. But the buyer did purchase, the bird company did purchase 49,500 and they were offered a 1% discount if they paid within 15 days. And like I said earlier, we're going to take advantage of all the discounts as the buyer. So I'm going to take that 49,500 and multiply it by 99%. And that is the cost of my merchandise inventory. So I'm going to debit my merchandise inventory, which is an asset for $49,005. I'm going to credit my accounts payable, the Swan Company, for $49,005. All 
on the April 8th transaction, it says the Swan Company paid freight of $710 for delivery of merchandise sold to the Bird Company on April 8th. So if we go back to April 8th, these were the terms were FOB destination. So the Swan Company should pay the freight. But right now we're doing just the buyer's books. So there would be no journal entry that we record for the second April 8th transaction. So you can see here on the journal, I just wrote down, there's no entry here. I wanted you to know that because um, the Swan Company was responsible for paying the freight charges and it did not have anything to do with the Bird Company. So therefore there would be no journal entry that we would make on the second April 8th transaction. On April the 12th, we per, we, the Bird Company, that's us, paid the Swan Company for the purchase of April the 2nd. So you need to refer back to April the 2nd and you can see that the accounts payable was on the books for 31690 and now we are paying the Swan Company the amount that we owed them. So we're going to debit the accounts payable Swan Company to reduce the liability by 31690 and we're gonna credit our cash because our assets are being reduced here. Notice that this transaction happened exactly 10 days is when they paid for it, which means they were within the discount period. So they were able to take advantage of that 2% discount that was offered to them. On the next transaction, which is April the 18th, it says the Swan Company paid the Bird Company a refund of $2,000 for defective merchandise in the April 2nd purchase. And the Bird Company agreed to keep the merchandise. All this is telling us something. The Bird Company asked for uh, some amount off of their original price that they paid for this merchandise and the seller agreed to give them $2,000 off of their selling price. So what they're doing is they're offering the Swan Company since the Bird Company had already paid for the merchandise on April the 2nd. They had paid for it on April the 12th, but this is April 18th. And so the, the Swan Company is offering them a cash refund. So we would have to debit our, our cash for the amount that we received from the Swan Company, which was $2,000. Notice this is the gross amount because this uh, a liability had already been paid on April the 12th. Notice also that this was a purchase allowance and not a return. So what that means is on the seller's books, which we're not there yet, we're not gonna have to restock the inventory because it was just an amount of for damaged merchandise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna debit our cash because the bird company is receiving a cash refund we're going to credit our merchandise inventory because the cost of our merchandise inventory has gone down by 2000. Uh, the, there was an allowance off of the price of this. So we need to show the merchandise inventory at its cost. It is no longer 31,690. It would be 31,690 less 2,000. So that's why we are crediting the merchandise inventory. It didn't cost us as much as it had originally, 
because the merchandise was damaged. On the next transaction, which is the 23rd, it says the bird company paid the swan company for the purchase of April the 8th. So back, you have to look back at the purchase for April 8th. We owed the swan company $49,005. So we're gonna have to pay this. So our accounts payable, the swan company is being reduced for the $49,000 and five dollar accounts payable that we originally had credited we got to reduce it because they have we have paid the swan company and because we are the bird company and we have paid the swan company our cash is decreasing by forty nine thousand and five dollars on the 24th transaction the Swan Company has sold merchandise on account to the Bird Company. Again, we are the Bird Company, so we're buying merchandise. Uh, the terms are FOB shipping points, so that means that we've got to pay the shipping. Um, and the cost of the merchandise sold was 40400 which would not apply to our buying transaction because we're buying the merchandise uh, there was no purchases discount that was offered to us. We have to record it at the full amount, which is 67350 So we're simply going to debit our merchandise inventory for 67350 And we're going to credit our accounts payable, the Swan Company, for 67,350. On the next transaction, the bird company, that's us, paid freight of 875 on the April 24th purchase from the Swan Company. So if we look back at the April 24th purchase, do you see here where it said it was FOB shipping point? So what they're saying is on the 26th, they're actually paying the freight uh, of 875. And so when we pay the freight, what this is going to do is it's going to increase the amount of our merchandise inventory. Because when we are the buyer, we're going to debit the merchandise inventory for the amount of the shipping. So on the 26th, you can see that we debited merchandise inventory for $875. That's because shipping adds to the overall purchase price of the merchandise. So when we pay the shipping company, we're going to debit our merchandise inventory because that becomes a part of the cost of that merchandise inventory. We're going to credit our cash account because we actually paid the shipping company. So our cash is going to go down in this situation here. And in the April 30th transaction, the Swan Company granted a customer allowance which is a credit memorandum to the bird company for 11,300 for merchandise that was returned from the August 24th purchase. So we bought some merchandise. We weren't offered a discount. So this gross amount is what we're going to be reducing our merchandise inventory for. And because we have not paid the swine company for that purchase yet, we're going to reduce our accounts payable. So our accounts payable is going to be debited to reduce it for 11300 And our merchandise inventory is going to be credited to reduce it 
for 11,300. Now on the second part of this problem, they want you to turn around and journalize those same transactions for April. But this time we're going to be the seller that's recording the transactions. So what we've got to do is we've got to look at the April 2nd transaction to see what happened. And in this case, this one company, which is going to be us now, now we're recording the transactions for this one company. We're going to be selling merchandise on account to the bird company. We sold them 32,000. The terms were FOB shipping point. And we offered them a 2% sales discount if they pay within 10 days. This is what we call a cash discount, actually. It's an amount that's going to come off of this 32,000. So just like we did from the purchasing transaction, we're going to multiply 32,000 times 98% to record the amount that the customer owes us um, for that sale. So in my journal on April the 2nd, I'm going to debit my accounts receivable, the bird company, and I'm going to credit the, my sales for 31,360. And it looks like I forgot to write that down as a computation. So if you'll bear with me just a second, I'm going to insert a line in here and I'm going to write down the computation so you'll know how we get that figure. We're going to take the gross amount of the sale, which was 32,000 and multiply it by 98%. So 32,000 times 0.98% equals 31,360. So this is how we're getting this figure right here. Because we are selling to the bird company, we're selling it on account. They're gonna pay for this later but the amount that we sold them was actually 31,360. But what you have to take into consideration on this transaction from the seller's point of view, when we read the rest of it, remember we're the Swan Company and we paid $330 to the shipper and then we added it back to the invoice. So what we want to show here is that our accounts receivable would be going up by the amount of the shipping and our cash would be going down because we paid the freight to the freight company, whoever the shipping company was. And so we would need to on the April 2nd, record a second transaction where we would debit accounts receivable for the shipping charges. Notice this accounts receivable is debited for 330, which is the shipping charges. We're going to credit our cash account because the seller has paid the shipping company. So the seller's cash is decreasing by $330. And because we're using the perpetual inventory system, remember that we record two journal entries for the sale. One is to record the sale, and the second one is to update the merchandise inventory that we sold. 
So this second, or actually the third journal entry just so happens on this particular transaction because the seller prepaid the shipping charges. The third journal entry for the April 2nd transaction would record a debit to the cost of merchandise sold and a credit to merchandise inventory simply because we're using the perpetual inventory system, which keeps a record of the merchandise inventory balanced at all times. So we needed to show that our merchandise inventory went down because we sold our customers uh, inventory that cost us 19,200. So from the seller's point of view, the cost of merchandise sold, which is an expense account is increasing by 19,200. That's what it cost this one company. So we debit the cost of merchandise sold for the cost of the merchandise inventory, which was given, and we credit the merchandise inventory for 19,200. This credit to the merchandise inventory shows a reduction in the asset because our merchandise inventory has gone out the door and now belongs to the bird company. Our merchandise inventory went down in this situation from the seller's point of view. So on the April 2nd transaction, we had three separate journal entries we had to record. One was to record the sale, one was was to update the merchandise inventory, and one was to record that we have uh, paid the shipping company the amount and added it back to the customer's bill. So if you want to, you could see that the two of these, the two debits to the accounts receivable would equal what you had credited up here for the accounts payable of 31690 but we are recording these transactions now from the seller's point of view. So all three of those transactions had to be recorded for April the 2nd. Now on April the 8th, again, we're selling merchandise on account to the bird company for 49,500. This time the terms were FOB destination which means that we, the seller, are gonna be paying the shipping once we know how much the shipping charge is. In this April 8th transaction, we don't know how much it is, but we do know that we are expecting that we're gonna to have to pay the uh, shipping charges uh, for this particular sale. Now we did offer the Bird Company a 1% discount if they paid within 15 days. And like we said earlier, our buyers are going to take advantage of all the discounts. So from the seller's point of view, it would be most advantageous to them to go ahead and debit accounts receivable for the net amount, which would be 49,500 times 99%, because we're going to give them a 1% um, discount. And so on this April 8th transaction, we would have debited accounts receivable for $49,005. We would have credited our sales for $49,005. That's the net amount of the sale that we are crediting to the sales account because uh, we offered the bird company a sales discount. And so we have to record the net amount of the sale. Notice that there's a second transaction where we're debiting cost of merchandise sold and crediting the merchandise inventory for the cost of that merchandise sold, 
that they gave to us, the cost of merchandise sold was 29,700. So we have to update the expense account and update the merchandise inventory by showing that merchandise inventory is going out the door. We have sold it. So there are two journal entries on the 8th. Every time there's a sale, there's at least two journal entries that we have to record. Now on the second eighth transaction, it says the Swan Company paid freight of $710 for the delivery of merchandise sold to the Bird Company on April the 8th. So right here on April the 8th, you can see the terms were FOB destination. That means the seller's got to pay and they're actually paying on the 8th, $710. So when the seller has to pay the shipping, the shipping charges are debited to a delivery expense account. So we're gonna increase our delivery expense account by $710. We're going to credit our cash account for $710 because we paid the shipper $710. On the transaction on the 12th, the bird company paid us, the swan company, for the purchase of April the 2nd. And what you have to remember is that on April the 2nd, there were two transactions, excuse me, let me point to the right one. That wasn't the right one. Right here's the sales transactions. There was a sales transaction for 31360 which was debited to accounts receivable. And there was also the shipping charges, which was debited to the accounts receivable. So the total of the cash that we're gonna receive from the bird company is the total of our accounts receivable account, which would be 31,360 plus $330, which is $31,690 that we're receiving in cash from the Bird Company. So this was for the sale plus the freight charges. The total cost of that merchandise was $31,690 or the total amount of cash that we received from that sales 31,690. We're going to credit the accounts receivable for 31,690 because the bird company has paid us cash. They no longer owe us 31,690. So our accounts receivable, which is an asset, is decreasing by 31,690. It had to be credited. And on the 18th, the Swan Company, which is us, paid the Bird Company a refund of $2,000. The refund was for defective merchandise on the April 2nd purchase. And the Bird Company agreed to keep the merchandise so we don't have to put it back on our books, but we do have to show this as a refund that we paid to the bird company. So we're going to debit our cash refunds payable account, or actually it's our customer refunds payable account for $2,000. Our liability has to be reduced and we're going to pay out our cash for that so I'm so sorry, I've got off track, I believe. 
No, it didn't. Because we're the swan company and we have, uh, yeah, I got off track because we were doing the one about the customer refund payable. So sorry about that. On the 18th, we would debit our customer refund payable because our liabilities are going down and we would credit our cash account for uh, $2,000. That was the transaction on April the 18th. Now on April the 23rd, the Bird Company paid Swan Company for the purchase of April the 8th. So we got to go back to the April 8th transaction and you can see we offered them a 1% discount. So 49,000 times 99, 49,500 times 99% is $49,005 that we're going to be receiving in cash. So we're debiting our cash and we're going to credit that our accounts receivable, the bird company for $49,005. On the 24th, the Swan Company, that's us, sold merchandise on account to the Bird Company. The terms were FOB shipping point. So that means since we're the seller, it doesn't affect us. We didn't give them a discount. We just sold them this amount on credit. So we're going to debit our accounts receivable, the Bird Company, for 67,350 and credit our sales account for 67,350. You can see where we did that here. And because this is a sales transaction, we also have to update the cost of merchandise sold. So we're going to debit the cost of merchandise sold for the amount that it cost us. And the cost of merchandise sold was 40,400. We're going to credit our merchandise inventory for 40,400. Then on the 26th, it says the bird company paid freight of 875 on the April 24th purchase from the Swan Company. Well, the terms were FOB shipping point. So the bird company had to pay the shipping. That didn't have anything to do with the Swan Company. So what I did is I just put down the date and put no entry there so you'd understand that I didn't just skip the 26 transaction, I looked at it, but there would be no entry because it was not our shipping. So we can move on to the April 30th transaction. And we're going to be the Swan Company and the Swan Company has granted a customer allowance, a credit memo to the Bird Company for $11,300 for merchandise that was returned on August the 24th. Notice on August 24th, there was no discount that was offered. So we're going to use the gross amount here of 11,300 to record this journal entry. And because they did return the merchandise, there will be two journal entries with this return. The first one would be to reduce the accounts receivable or the selling amount for the 11,300. And we would have to debit the customer refund payable by the 11,300. But do you see here, we credited our accounts receivable because the bird company took back or sent us some merchandise back, which cost them 11,300. So our customer refund payable is gonna be debited for 11,300, 
we're going to credit the bird company account for 11,300. And so we're reducing their accounts receivable so that they don't have to pay us as much since they return some of the merchandise. Now there is a second journal entry that goes with this return because the merchandise was actually returned. They had to restock or put the merchandise inventory back on the shelves at its original cost, which was given to you. The cost of merchandise returned is $6,500. And we're going to credit the estimated returns inventory account, which uh, is an asset account that's going down because we actually had a return of merchandise inventories, no longer estimated, it actually happened. And so that's all the journal entries for this particular problem. I'm gonna stop sharing this with you and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.